Alright, so I made this uh, makeshift EV charging station. So we got this plug here, pops out from the side like that. Okay, this is the standard one uh, for the Tesla, it comes with the adapter, so I figured why not get this so that um, it will work with any EV. Alright, so anyways, this thing just plugs in like this, let me see if I can show that better. So, basically, it just shoves into this spot here, and it holds itself. Alright, and then when we want to take it out, we just pull this out, the wire drops out from the side like this, okay? And you can kind of just pull out as much as you need, all right? And as you pull it, it'll just come out just like this, okay? So I'll put it over this way, all right? And then that's as far as it goes. So this, the cable's actually coming out from, let me actually show you. Okay, so the cable is actually coming out from under, oh, you can't even see it from here. Let me actually open this. So I made this little release tab here so I can open it up if I ever need to. Okay. Then you can see inside. All right, so here you can see the cable comes out from down there, the corner of the garage. And I put this little piece of credit card here so that way it holds the um, box to the wall. So if I pull this out, you can see this whole box moves a lot more so you can see it pulls away so this thing is here just to hold it tighter to the garage so that you now it's harder to pull it away and that keeps it from falling over and then also one of the flaps I had it go underneath the garage so that holds it in place there all right and yeah so let me show you how to put it back so Basically here. I'm gonna put the camera here so you can see what's going on. I'll leave it open and then you can kind of see what's going on inside All right, so let me tilt this camera down This probably let's see if I can show this okay, Let's raise this higher Okay, so basically what's going on or can I show the entire thing probably not yeah, I don't think I can show the entire thing because it, the box is in the way. Maybe like this, okay. So you can kind of see. All right, so what I do, take the whole cable here. So because the box is so big, I don't have to get the entire thing. Um, but basically I pull the slack up from here, okay. And then we just get this through here and I just push the cable through okay normally the box will be closed so it will kind of push on this here all right and then you kind of just continue twisting and pushing the wire into there okay again it will hit the ceiling and then you can kind of just twist the wire to kind of angle it the right way and it as you can see it will kind of make itself go into the right position okay just like this all right and then once you get to the end of the cable you basically just again so this box will normally be closed um, but basically you just push this piece into there and it holds itself in place and that's pretty much it so that's my makeshift car charger. I actually have a special adapter that lets me combine two 120 volt outlets so I didn't have to install like an actual uh, one but it has to be on two different breaker um, switches. Okay so we're just going to tape this back closed. So that's how I can get like a 240 volt 15 amps. It doesn't charge as fast because it's only 15 amps but at least I can do 240 volts, which for a Tesla, um, when I was charging it, it was saying about 13, 14 miles per hour of charge rate, which is more than enough for me. And yeah, for most other EVs with or plug-in hybrids with smaller batteries, this will charge in no time. So works perfectly. And then this charger I can take anywhere. It plugs into, I, I forgot what the thing is I think a 1450 or whatever the one with like the four slits 
that they use for the newer dryers and RVs. But um, yeah, so that's how it works. Let me actually do this again now with the lid on so I can kind of show you. Okay, let me move this back here a bit. Um, the only thing is you'll see like you can actually see the wires coming out from there. So let's go ahead and pull this back out again. Again, the wire just comes out from the side like this. Okay, and you can pull out as much or as little as you need. So you don't need to pull the entire length. Oh, I have a customer here, so hold on, I'll be back. All right, I'm back, so let's go ahead and let me show you how I do this. So I basically will hold this part, but we're going to start from the bottom here. And we'll just grab the cable, okay? And then um, you can actually just leave it outside, whatever works for you. Um, I mean, <laughs> unless you're going to make this box, you won't be able to do this. But anyways, we're just going to push the cable in. And then when it gets stuck, that means it's hitting the top. So what I do is I curve it down a little and I push it in again. And you can see it will just rotate itself. If it comes out like that, I'm going to have to readjust it and I have to kind of rotate the cable a little. Okay, there we go. Just like this. And then I'm going to get to this. I have to untwist the cable a bit. But basically, you just keep doing that. Okay, and you just keep pushing it in. Alright, and that way I don't have the cable just lying outside everywhere. Alright, like that. And we're pretty much done. And push that in, and there we go. So now we have the charger all set. And it's easy to get now. You basically just pull it back out, and there you go. So, yeah, that's it. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed my weird new um, charger thing. Let me actually take this off of here again and I'll show you what it looks like how it recoiled itself back in the box. Again you can see that part of the cable is out there but that's okay. I reinforced all the edge edges with tape here and here okay all of here all around even in the hole for the charge port and then this I might use Velcro eventually for this, but um, I put tape here so that when it sticks, it doesn't get stuck with all the dirt on it, though I don't intend to open that often. And here you can see how it just like coiled itself into a mess like that. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna close this thing back up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. So I'm ready now for my Tesla to come so I can charge it up. And yeah. All right, see y'all later, bye. All right, so here's from the inside of the garage. You can actually see the cardboard. I put an extra thing folded up of cardboard to have it put more um, force smushing down that flap. All right, the charger comes out here. All right, I'm not using actually this orange um, cable here. If you're wondering, see, this isn't even plugged in. All right, and the other end's right there. Um, this orange cable, the reason I have this here is every so often if we have power outages, I can just um, run this cable outside um, to my generator and I can actually um, power my freezer that's inside because last time the power out was for a long time and then it caused all the food to melt. Anyways, here's how I have the charger plugged in. So we have this big charger brick here. You can see it's not charging anything right now, it's showing zero. And then this wire, it goes up to this. Um, I think it was called a 14 NEMA 1450 or whatever adapter. Um, and this adapter, what it does is it splits into two things. I don't know if you can see back there. Um, the one below is a smart switch. So I um, have two smart switches. So one smart switch is here and it connects to that. Okay. The other one goes to this extension cable that's running down here. And this is a, if I remember correctly, 14 gauge, 30 foot wire. Okay, and that's the required for having an extension for EV because it can handle 15 amps charge, no problem. Okay, so I only charge at 15 amps. I don't go higher than 15 amps because I don't wanna end up causing the cables here to overheat. So, 
Yeah, all right, so let's go to the other side and I'll show you where this wire goes. All right, so the other end of the wire goes up here and it goes along the side of the washing machine or dryer, washing machine and dryer here, and it plugs to another smart switch here. So here you can see we have that. And of course I can't run the washing machine while this is running. Um, though if I lower the amperage for the charging, then it, it's actually okay. Oh, there's some spider webs there. I need to clean that up. But um, anyways, the reason I put these two smart switches um, is because that splitter that allows you to connect two 120 volts um, together, if you unplug one cable, it can be dangerous because the electricity can backflow into the other outlet and then this will kind of have some current running through it, the, the prongs. So what I do, um, I have these smart switches connected with my Google Home. Uh, and I'll basically just tell Google car charger on car charger off and it can turn both switches off at the same time And it makes it a lot safer. All right, and then people know if this blue lights on that um, They shouldn't use this I could also just unplug this and then whenever I need it just plug it in plug it in um, If I'm charging the car, I can just physically unplug that but uh, the washing machine doesn't actually use too much power and it's not like a constant power because it's like turn like when it spins it's just like spin 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 so it's not like a constant current of energy flowing so i think at one time someone didn't know and they started the washing machine and it was fine it didn't even trip the breaker but i don't recommend that because again this is pulling 15 amps already and the circuit breaker is only 20 amps so um i don't know if the washing machine is going to be using um Usually it's the safe uh, amount, I think, is the max you want to use is 18 amps. So that's 3 times 120, so that's like 360 watts. I'm pretty sure the washing machine uses more than that. Um, so I don't recommend running both at the same time. Anyways, that's my setup. And yeah, I'm going to clean this junk up. All right, and that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Oh, one other thing I didn't mention about this extension cable, um, the reason I bought this is because it has these outlets running along. I think it's like every four feet or something, there's an outlet here. So I have dual purpose. This cable isn't meant to just stay here permanently. If I'm going on a long trip, I can actually take this with me and use that for other purposes. And then if I ever need to charge elsewhere, I can do that. But yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.